let's do a little review before we get into that on what we learned about a series and a parallel circuit. If you remember when we first started working with series circuits, we worked with DC. We had resistors that were in series and we also had resistors in parallel that look like this. Now we learned rules for calculating out those circuits. When we first started we had only resistance. We had only DC applied to that circuit. Now with DC applied to the circuit the only opposition to current flow we have got is resistance because there's no changing magnetic field. Now we learn rules for solving each of those circuits. We learned that in a series circuit that the voltage is additive. We learn that the current is the same throughout the whole circuit. That resistance is additive and that power is additive. This is a Surrey circuit. Now these are the rules that we learned that we would use for this particular circuit. Remember that in a series circuit the components are connected in for in. It states that the voltage is additive. That means if I know the voltage drop across the each of the resistors, I can add them together and I would have the total voltage in that circuit. The current is the same. If I knew the current in any part of that circuit, I would know the parameter for that current, you see, because it's the same. Okay, the resistance. The resistance now is also additive in that circuit. If I uh, know the resistance of each of the resistors, I can add them together and I would have my total resistance. Power is additive in any circuit, whether it's in a parallel circuit or, or in, a, in a series circuit, I know that I can add the power and I would have the total power dissipated in that circuit. So this is a rule or rules that we should know for or a series circuit. For a parallel circuit, I'll just change this and we'll write parallel here. For a parallel circuit, now the voltage down here across each of the components is going to be the same. The current in each one of the branches now would be additive. If I want to know the total current in that circuit, in other words, that point to where it breaks off up to that point, in other words, my total current would be up to the point that it first pairs off or where it first parallels off. Uh, I would know that if I would add the current in those branches, I would have the total. So now our current is additive. The resistance, the resistance now is calculated by the reciprocal method. To find my total resistance, if I time on in parallel, I would have to use a reciprocal method, or we actually learned three methods. We, we learned that we had an equal branch, unequal branch, and reciprocal method. Reciprocal method would work for all of them, regardless. We know that when we add resistors in parallel, that the re total resistance is going to be lower than the lowest resistance we've got in that circuit. Our power, like we said, is additive in any circuit. Now those are the rules now that we would use for a parallel circuit. Now what we want to do is change our circuit 
we want to, in this circuit, put alternating current source. And we can do that in a couple ways. We could put a circle here and put a sine wave in there to represent alternating current. Or another way we could do it to represent alternating current is put a G in there for a generator. We would know in either case that we have a changing magnetic field. For calculating out circuits which have only resistors, it doesn't make any difference whether we have alternating or direct current. And it's because of the effect of a changing magnetic field in a resistor that has no effect whatsoever in the relationship of our applied voltage and our current flow. We have resistors as a component, and we represent those resistors by R, say for example R1, and we could represent a certain value. Down here, if I leave a resistor in here, I'd call that R1. If I put an inductor in that circuit, and I'll represent by some loops here, I would identify that by L1. In other words, our, our inductor's symbol is L. Our resistor's is R. If I have a circuit that has R and L in it, I would show that circuit as being an RL circuit. If I had a capacitor in a circuit, and down here I'll put a capacitor, it would look like this. I would represent that with a symbol C. Down here I would have an RC circuit. If I had all three components, resistor, inductor, and capacitor in one, then I would have an RCL circuit. I can put an inductor in there and it would look like this. Now, in this particular circuit, I have all three components in there. Now, we talked about the effect of resistors, inductors, and capacitors in a circuit, in an alternating current circuit. If I have an inductor in the circuit, we know that an inductor opposes a change in the current flow. And notice I said change in the current flow. If I didn't have any change in that current flow, it wouldn't oppose it. And the way that inductor opposes it is when we have a change in our current flow, then we have a change in our magnetic field. And what happens is that magnetic field cutting itself, in other words, that changing magnetic field cutting the coil, also induces a voltage back into that coil and that voltage is opposite in direction. In other words, it will oppose a change in your current, creating what we call a counter-electromotive force. And that counter-electromotive force is opposite our applied voltage. And it takes an applied voltage to cause current to want to move through that circuit. So if I have a force that opposes that voltage, it's going to oppose any change that would be made in, in our current flow. This coil that we're referring to causes current to lag by 90 degrees. In other words, in, because of its effect on the circuit, if I had a circuit that had only an inductor in it, my current would lag behind by 90 degrees. If, on the other hand, I have a resistor in there with that inductor, now the resistor doesn't oppose a change in your current. It's going to have an opposition to your current flow, but it's not going to oppose the change in the current. So the resistor, the current is, if I had an only resistive circuit now, that current would be in phase with my applied voltage. 
we can draw out a sine wave that represents only resistance by showing the current right in phase. So I wouldn't have uh, I wouldn't have a lag in my current flow if I had only resistance in that circuit. However, I put an inductor in there. Then you see it does cause current to shift. The value of my resistance and my inductance in the circuit is going to determine where between 0 and 90 degrees that current is going to lag, how much it's going to lag in that circuit. Now if we put a capacitor in the circuit, let's say that I have only a capacitor in my circuit and I'm going to have an RC circuit up here. If I put a capacitor in that circuit, remember that a capacitor opposed a change in voltage, which is just the opposite of what that inductor did. If I have equal values of the two, they'll cancel one another. Okay. Now, I, if I had, <coughs> excuse me, if I had a, a capacitive circuit, an RC circuit, we'll say we've got a, a resistor and a capacitor. And remember now, a capacitor tends to oppose a change in voltage. What'll happen, the current in this particular circuit will tend to lead. Now I've got a resistor and I've got a capacitor so that my current is going to lead somewhere between 0 and 90 degrees. If I had an inductor in here, my current's going to lag because of the resistor. It's going to lag somewhere between 0 and 90. Now this is where our trig is going to help us. This trig will tell us what our power factor angle is going to be the amount of lag that we've got in our, between our two sine waves from our applied voltage to, and, uh, and then our current flow in our circuit. The amount of lead or lag can be calculated in degrees by the use of trig that we just learned. In our two circuits, we had, remember also we went through Remember also we went through series and we said that voltage in a series circuit is additive. That current is the same. That resistance we use the reciprocal method. No, resistance in series is additive. And that power is also additive. Now those are the two sets of rules for each circuit. In other words, here's the series, here's the parallel. Whenever you see additive in a circuit, such as we see in voltage in series, resistance in series, and power in series, then you know that if I have any other component in that circuit other than a resistor, that we can use the vector method to calculate it out. Now because of the effect of an alternating current circuit, because of the effect of an inductor and a capacitor, wherever we see additive we can add them. If I have a resistor and an inductor in the circuit and I know their opposition to current flow in series, we will add them. But we have to add them by the right triangle method. So that in a series circuit, if I know the voltage drops, let's, let's say that I have alternating current here and I have a resistor and I have an inductor. If I know the opposition to current flow of that inductor in the form of ohms, in other words, my inductive reactance, 
and I know my value of my resistor in that circuit. I can add that opposition to current flow as long as I use the right triangle method or the vector method. And so this is the reason for studying right triangles. We know of the effect of that inductor and the resistor in our circuit. We can add them by the right triangle method to come up with total opposition of current flow. Now this is in the form of impedance then, which also has a value in ohms, you see. So any place up here you see additive and you have dissimilar components, you have alternating current, then you have to add them by the right triangle method. Now power, you'll notice in both circuits, is, is additive so that we can use, uh, so that we can use the right triangle or the vector method to calculate total power. Uh, resistance and voltage can also be calculated, you see, by the triangle method or the vector method. Over here on the parallel circuit, we, would, we can use power and we can use current. That means if I had dissimilar components in a parallel circuit, I could add the currents in each of the branches. If I had a resistive branch and an inductive branch, I can add those two by the right triangle method to come up with total current. Now let's go to a few circuits and then we'll work one out and I'll refer back to this.